Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'll be dealing with this 2001 Lexus IS300. Seems to have a dead battery. I hope it's that simple and not an alternator. So I'm going to pull the battery out take it to the auto parts store, have them put it on the charger and test it and let me know if it's any good. Usually if the alternator's bad, a couple of the warning lights on the instrument cluster will light up, including the battery uh, charge light. If the battery's bad, usually the, uh, you probably won't get a battery light and it'll just die out on you because the battery's dead, then it won't restart. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we see a date on the battery and go from there okay I put the key in the car turn the key I get no warning lights in the dash and I get no crank no crank no click or nothing so the battery is probably extremely drained so I reach down by the uh, left foot area and release the hood reach my hand under the hood grab the tab lift the hood up and I'm going to find the hood support okay the hood support is on the bottom side of the hood you unclip it there and then you come down to the driver's side and work the hood support into that uh, receiver right there and that's the hood and the hood support so you go over to the passenger side back here here's your battery it has a hold down and it looks like it does have a maybe a little corrosion on the connectors there that doesn't mean that's the problem but since I have no uh, crank I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it and probably after I have the battery tested I'm going to clean these posts real good make sure they're clean because sometimes if you have some corrosion build up in your post that'll stop you from getting a good charge and being able to crank the car so I'm gonna go ahead and take these two nuts loose they look like 10 millimeter then take the hold down nuts loose they look like 10 millimeter and lift the battery out okay all of those connections were 10 millimeter and the uh, battery hold down are held down there on the back side of it and there and the tray on the front side of it looks like somebody's cleaned this motor recently so she's probably had the car detailed and here's the battery it has some kind of a sleeve that you want to leave with the car you don't want the battery shop losing that so we'll see if we can see a date on here it's a three-year replacement battery but I don't see a date on it yet so let me look around see if I see a date sticker on it. Another little surprise, the battery had some kind of tray adapter on the bottom of it, so I want to leave that here as well. I don't want the uh, parts store that will test the battery to lose any of this equipment for the car. The closest thing I could find to a date on here is an 1109. That would probably be month and year. So this battery is not five years old so it may not be bad I'm gonna go ahead and test it before I assume the battery's bad and not the alternator okay so I closed the hood made sure all the doors were locked with the car with my key and I did use a uh, rubber gloves to handle this I took the gloves off and you want to make sure if you handle the battery in any way that you wash your hands before you touch your clothes and things like that because you don't want battery acid to eat away at your clothes and stuff that still does happen so off to the auto parts store to have them try to charge and test the battery see if it's any good okay I'm here at AutoZone I'm gonna walk the battery in when they see me come in they're gonna escort me to the end of the counter and where I'll give them the battery and they'll give me a receipt for the batteries testing and recharge it. It's a free service that most of these auto parts stores give you to try to win your loyalty as a customer. Okay, I set the battery there. They say they're going to try to charge it first and then test it. 
Yeah, it's my claim slip for picking it back up, and uh, it's, it's a try to figure out what kind of battery it is. So when you come get it, make sure you get the one that you dropped off. The guy that took the battery said they'll be done charging and testing it in an hour. So I'll go run and do something else in the meantime and come back. For okay, the battery charged up, so they're saying the battery's good. So I'm gonna clean the post off real good, reinstall it, uh, spray it with the protector spray, and fire it up and bring the car over here so they can load test the alternator. Actually, since I have a scan gauge, I'm just gonna plug my scan gauge in and see if the alternator's giving off a charge. Okay, I'm gonna take this battery cleaner, clean inside the cable in with this, clean the battery post with this, put it on there, scrub it back and forth, and then I'm going to install the battery, look at the cables, see if there's anything on the cables that I could clean. Uh, I may take these connectors apart and clean between those connectors and see how my battery juice goes then. Okay, I cleaned both battery posts off real good with that cleaner and this wire brush. Then I scraped the... Uh, battery post terminals really good and I actually got a lot out of the positive one uh, try not to breathe that uh, battery acid dust if you can avoid to but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the battery now that I got it all scraped out you can rinse this powder down if you want most of this stuff in here is plastic so it shouldn't do any harm but let me install the battery and see what my scan gauge reads on the voltage Okay, I used this stuff here to spray on the battery. Came with some uh, battery connectors, those little pads that you buy with them. I sprayed it on both posts. Now I'm going to go inside, hook up my scan gauge, and go through a starting cycle and an idle cycle. Things are already looking a little better. I got a door open light. I got a little light glowing around my keyhole. I put my key in. I got a lot of indicators in the dash that are good. Let me uh, try to turn off this climate control system. Okay, my uh, scan gauge reads 12.1 volts. I'm gonna hit the starter and see what the volts drop to when I go to start it. It's gonna be a flash. Didn't really drop. But right now the battery voltage is reading 14 volts, which is good. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the car for a drive, probably about 30 miles, and see if the battery voltage drops or not. So let's go ahead and close the hood and monitor the battery voltage in the drive. Okay, I'm having some charging issues here. When I'm driving and the RPMs are revved up around 2,000, I'm getting 13.8 volts. I do have the lights on, but every time I come to a stop, the volts drop down around 12.2 and 12.4. Okay, we're exiting the freeway, coming up to a red light here, and when I come to a stop, we're going to see if the voltage drops below that thick line or even that second smaller line. So, here we go. My meter over there still reads 13.3. Now it's down to 12.3, 12.1, 12.2. And as you can see, we're under that uh, thick line. Now I'm bouncing down around 11.9. So the voltage on the gauge is even under the thick line which it should never be and over here as you see it's at 12 bouncing around 12. see the middle little round thing says nine the top says 18 the lower one says zero so those lines represent almost two volts per dash right now my scan gauge is reading 13.3 and that uh, line is above the next thick line. I just restarted the car. The amp seemed pretty high. It's probably charging 14 right now. And that's how these alternators are sometimes when they're going bad. 
when they're cold, they charge good. When they get warm, it starts dropping off. Now, one thing about these alternators losing their charge, when the, when the voltage drops down around 11 or 12, it's possible that they're not charging at all. So, okay, this little charge uh, meter is three notches above the nine notch when it's at 14 volts on my scan gauge. So if it drops down to two notches above that nine notch, you're probably in danger of a weak charging system. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here, and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.